Manchester United fans, we'd welcome your take on the news this afternoon and we'll chat with the former Liverpool and England defender Glenn Johnson. There's all this plus reaction from Holland to Van Nistelrooy's interim appointment, appointment rather, at Old Trafford. And we'll ask an ex top ref how Michael Oliver might be feeling today. Hmm. Uh, it is six minutes past one. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Andy. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, Paul. Is Michael Oliver going to Eric's leaving party? I just wondered. <laughs> yeah, well, I think he's contributed I, to it. I, I don't think they'll let him in. Uh, we'll talk about that with Mark Halsey later on. Uh, interesting to hear from mm. you, Manchester United fans. A couple of things. What about the timing of it? Uh, a number of you have been chatting to the guys earlier on saying, you know, why didn't it happen three or four weeks ago? It does seem a bit odd. I think there's a fair bit of public sympathy for Van, uh, for um, uh, Ten Hag today mm. in light of that decision right at the end of the West Ham game and uh, the f- poor finishing of his, of his players. He's only got so much control over that. But anyway, let us know what you think and who you'd like to see next. Do you want to give Ruud Van Nistelrooy a go? As we said, we'll be in Holland later on to see how he did PSV and the kind of style of football you like to play, whether it's a good fit for the players you have. Um, 03717 That's 03717 Talksport.com forward slash H and J. You can text to 81089 or tweet to TSH and J. TSH A N D J. Leave us a voice note 03717 If you can't join us in person, and we'll bring you the best of those throughout the afternoon. Uh, we're going to kick off, Andy, okay. chatting to a man we've spoken to quite a few times during the Ten Hag reign, and he has broadly been uh, a defender of Ten Hag and um, wanted him to stay on this area he feels today. He is, of course, from the Stratford Paddock on YouTube, Jay Motti. Hi, Jay. Hi, lads. You OK? Yeah, not so bad. Well, look, they've, 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 uh, they've pushed the button on it, and as I said, we've spoken a lot, and you've always been of a mind to say... Let's stick with him, even in some of those darker moments. But had you got to the point, Jay, because we haven't spoken for a month or so, that you felt it was the right time? The the what uh, the Tottenham game was a difficult one for me. That's when I sort of lost faith, if I'm being brutally honest, because going into that game, I thought that was a, a winnable fixture, a game you needed to win and and hopefully get a run going. And so just to lose, not just to lose, but the manner in which we lost, where even before the Bruno Fernandes red card, Spurs were all over us. I just I got the impression this wasn't going to end well. And that's when I started to think, you know, this 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 isn't going to work basically. And I, I wanted him to prove me wrong. And I thought maybe okay, last San Saloon fell after after the Brentford game. Can we do something after that? And then the next game, yes, you can argue about the Michael Oliver VAR decision, whatever. But we ultimately lost at West Ham, and you cannot keep losing matches. You can't be sat in what fourteenth in the Premier League and expect to keep your job. So. Listen, last season we spoke a lot and I always backed him and I felt almost vindicated when we won the FA Cup because it was a real high. And I thought, OK, next season we need to kick on. And this season we've been we've been probably worse than we've ever been under him. And the, the table tells its own story. So I'm sad to see him go, but it feels like it was the right decision. And he, he, he seemed like a, a dead man walking for a little while now. He, 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 look, he looks like someone who knows his, his job's done. Yeah. So, yeah, it's just a big question now they're going to bring in. It's very interesting because you say it's, it's so early in the season. You say they're 14th in the table, but they've got Chelsea on Sunday. They, they win that game. They're three points behind Chelsea. Chelsea. Everyone says Chelsea's had a wonderful start to the season. So it's a very, very early in the piece and plenty of time to recover, I think. Yeah, I think there is. You're right. I mean, we are, what, nine games in? So not even just around a quarter of the season. In, so there's the still season, time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, there's still time for for Manchester United to you know push on and try and get into that top four, try and at least get into the Champions League. There's there's no reason to just give up on that. It's going to be difficult. But that was another issue I think with tonight. Is like you say about the Chelsea game. Had we lost the Chelsea game, then you're saying okay, do you stick with him then or do you, do you sack him now? At least Rivan Nistelrooy has got that game. He's got the Leicester game. I think in the Carabao Cup before that as well. And then he's got an opportunity to maybe get that new manager bounce and get that win against Chelsea that can hopefully get the season going because. We've always looked ahead to the next game. We're going, OK, we can win this one. If we can do that, then we can get going. And this season, it's just not happened. Second half against yeah. Brentford, they showed a lot of improvement. So it looked, started to look as if there's something there. And again, yesterday, again, West Ham... It could have been you know, five new up half what, what does a manager do when Dallow can't put the ball in from there? I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I do feel for it tonight yesterday because, like you said, that first 45 minutes in particular, United should have been two or three in a look. The low Mr. a sitter... Bruno Fernandes should have scored a header. I mean, we had enough chance Alejandro Ganacho and, and it would have been a different story. But 
ultimately it's results the results going against them and you can look at the West Ham game and go okay we played well in that and we should have won it but then what about the Liverpool game what about the Spurs game what about the the Brighton game you know the, these results have, have stacked up then you've got the added point as well about Europe again you can look at it in isolation and go a draw away at Fenerbahce is in the end of the world but we haven't won in Europe for a year yeah that's that's not a, a, a record you can defend whether you're someone like me who has bats tonight or not it doesn't look great from the manager's point of view and it just adds to the air of, of the, the the feeling this isn't going to work all sorts it, of it names really hasn't. sorry Jay all sorts of names are popping up now even Javi's been mentioned and we'll chat to former United player Terry Gibson Spanish football expert about that later on um, I think they want man, this I think story. yeah they're going to want this they're going to want this to work aren't they it'd be interesting to see how long they give him um, and if you make a decent start, you know, two or three wins, the football good, the crowd on side, it, it could be a very different story. But I'm sure you'd like it to work with him, wouldn't you? I'd love to see Reid van Nistelrooy make a success at Manchester United. I spoke to you guys last season, or oh, sorry, in the summer, mm. and I, you were asking me about if it doesn't work out with tonight, who do you think is going to come in? And I did say Reid van Nistelrooy in that dugout. It seems like he's just waiting in the wings to, to take over as caretaker if things go wrong. And obviously yeah. that's what happened. And now... Ruud van Nistelrooy is a legend as a player, what he did at Manchester United, probably the best goal scorer I've ever seen. We've been here a little bit before with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, where we had that great start as caretaker. They gave him the, 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 the job permanently, and then the back end of that season, he fell off a bit of a cliff, although obviously we did have some good times under Ole. So it'll be interesting to see whether Ineos have a plan, whether the plan is, let's see what Ruud van Nistelrooy is about, or whether they've got someone else they've got as a, a more long-term option, someone like Xavi, or maybe, you know, I think they've been we've been linked with Perhaps Thomas Frank, I don't know about that one, or a more in from Sporting. So there's all the names being banded about, but I don't know what Ineos is thinking. Is I don't know whether this is a, a sort of an opportunity for Ruud van Nistelrooy to, to get the job permanently, or if they're just looking at it as purely a, a stepping stone to a permanent manager. Whoever gets the job's got to win over that dressing room because you know it's clear that the, they've got good players United and they, they've been massively underperforming. I agree with that completely. And I think people are too quick to go, well, everything at United is a shambles. The team's terrible. The squad's terrible. It's not. Like, we're not playing well enough, but we've got some good <laughs> players. We've got some good academy players as well coming through the, the ranks too. So there is a quality there. And, and I know what you can't just keep going, well, we won the FA Cup. Blah, blah, blah. But it showed when we beat Manchester City in that final that when United turn up, we've got some good players. And this is what the next manager's got to build on. And some of these players do have to take a long hard look at themselves. Some of them will have been here for the Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, Jose Mourinho time for the um, Ralph Ragnick era as well, if you can call it that. So, you know, they, they should be taking a little bit of responsibility. It's not all on the manager, although it ultimately is on him. There's players there that have underperformed and have let him down. Jay, good to talk to you. I'm sure we'll chat again. All the best. Thanks a lot. Take care, lads. Jay Motti there from the Stretford Paddock on uh, YouTube. 03717 talksport.com forward slash H&J. Text to 81089, tweet to TSH&J. Uh, he's been sacked today, says uh, Manchester United fan, not put their name on it. Because look at the run of fixtures bar Chelsea. Five or six winnable games yeah, until we go point. to Arsenal late November. I think that's the reason for the timing. I think Alex, the Manchester United fan, he's uh, a bit concerned about the timing. Hi, Alex. How are you doing? Yeah, not so bad. So you, you're not you're not pleased with the timing of this decision? I just don't really understand it, to be honest. Like, for me, in the office, it just it kind of resembles what Murta and Ed Woodward were doing back in the day when Mourinho got sacked. It seems to me that they're banking on, as you said, Rude winning the next five fixtures bar the Chelsea. They do look winnable on paper. And then hoping that it replicates an Oli where you give him the interim until the end of the season. And if he does a good job, he keeps the job. There's no real candidates in place. I mean, look, putting it like this, when you've got Tuchel, who was available a few weeks back, and then all of a sudden you've got the England job that he's now got, to me it just seems like, especially when we lost 3-0 to Liverpool and Spurs, mm. why do you not go for him then? It's just, yeah. to me... Ineos are doing a bad job from the get-go. And it's, it's not just their fault, it's also the players as well. But it, like, as a United fan, it's, just, it's, it's, not, it's not looking good for the future. No, T Tucker would have certainly have fitted the bill. <coughs> he would. The only, Excuse me. The only, thing, <coughs> the only thing is, though, Alex, then you're just chucking everything mm. out. You're back to square one. Obviously, quite some of the... Rude Van Nistelrooy can keep that coaching staff there. They've obviously sounded players out owners always do I They'll don't think Chelsea are the problem either next week it's the, it's the, you talk about the winnable those are the games that United struggle with when they play City you look how they stepped up yeah, you know, yeah, whenever yeah. they played Chelsea in the last few years they've always stepped up because it's a big game and they're big game players yeah. that, that's part of their problem I think. 
It, ch- it should transform the atmosphere. I mean, not the atmosphere has been terrible at Old Trafford, but I mean, you could tell the, the fans are on edge. But Alex, good man, thanks ever so much for your call. And I think some good points there that um, that mm. Tucker would have been one of the people that oh, almost yeah. certainly would have been in the frame uh, had they acted a bit sooner. Um, we're going to keep taking your calls on Manchester United and your emails and texts, so keep those coming. Interested to know you'd like to see come in next. Talks. Paul Hawksby and Andy Jacobs, Monday to Friday afternoons, 1 till 4, on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app, and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.